solar panels generating free electricity. Can you install this system yourself? It's not going to cost you as much as you think. Here's an awesome, easy to follow, step-by-step -step video. Today I'm going to take you through a complete build of 1800 watts of solar panels, two 48 volt server rack batteries by lead time, also by lead time, the 3500 watt solar inverter charger, this 250 amp circuit protector, two of the 300 amp bus bars, also by lead time, all of the wiring, connections and screws, the mounting hardware for the server rack batteries, and all of the RS-485 connectors. Instead of the traditional metal server racks for the batteries, we're building a very sturdy shelf to place our lead time batteries on. We're also using plywood and cement board to go behind our solar inverter charger. This cement board will be good to have in case anything ever heats up. This is going to be a very nice system and we're going to be using it to power the critical things in this house. This will also be a great source of backup power when the grid goes down. So let's get started and get this thing installed. put the cement board up. This cement board is good for fire safety. Okay, now we wanna go ahead and install the inverter and get it up here onto the cement board. Make it where you can get it started and kinda of hang it on that screw. Okay, there it is, that looks pretty good. We may even put some trim around this cement board. Okay, let's go ahead and get our batteries placed onto our heavy duty stand that we made. Okay, here are the mounts that these batteries come with. This way we can stack them one on top of the other. Ugh, lift this big heavy thing up here. Okay, we have all four of them on now. And this is how the other ones are going to fit to make the batteries stack on top of each other. I'm going to go ahead and get the racks put on the other battery. You know my videos are not here to bore you, so I'll get right back with you as soon as I get that done. Okay, there it is. We have all the batteries mounted here and the charge controller on the wall. It's time to wire this thing up. Okay, let me show you the brackets real quick. After you've lined up these dowels and set one on top of the other here, they have this bracket here that you can put here to secure both of the batteries together. Now, if you're just setting one on top of the other and you don't ever have any plan on moving them, you don't necessarily have to use this. Now, let me show you these lead time bus bars. They're kind of unique where they mount. Take this one out here. Then we're going to take our little bracket here. Take our other bracket. Then we'll take our bus bar here. Actually mount our bus bar right here on the side of the two batteries. Just leave these top and bottom screw here, the single screw loose until you get these screws in here. Okay, so there's our bus bar now mounted on the side. Okay, so here's the positive wire that will be going on here on this one. And uh, basically this has knockouts or pullouts, I guess, or not necessarily knockouts. You'll get those out of the way, but... So basically your positive will go on here and then it's going to go on to here. But I wanna make this really nice and neat looking. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut this wire to where it fits right here really tight and really snug. I don't want any extra wires. Okay, so we shortened the wires up here. Now they look really nice. I don't like the longer wires. I want this to look as clean as possible by the time it's finished. Okay, so here are the caps that come with the battery that protect the wiring and protect you from getting shocked. All right, we'll go ahead and slap this negative on real quick. After we shorten the wires up here, crimp some new ends onto them. All right, we'll go ahead and slap our cover back on here. Next is going to be to run the wiring up here to the breaker switch, and then the breaker switch to the inverter. Right here we have AC input. It's going to go to your generator or wall plug. Then we have the AC output, which this is going to go to your breaker box or whatever you're powering up from the inverter. Right here is where the positive and negative from the battery terminals are going to go. And right here is the PV hookups or the solar panel hookups, the positive and negative for the solar panels. What I would like to do here is go ahead and get our breaker mounted onto the board. We're just gonna put it directly up underneath the positive that runs into the inverter here. 
I don't want to put the breaker upside down, but according to this here, this is the output or the auxiliary, and right here it goes to the battery, so we're actually going to mount it this way. I do not believe that this breaker alone is going to be able to extinguish a DC arc. So if there's ever a short circuit of any kind and it becomes catastrophic, we will definitely need a T-class fuse. So in the same line of the breaker on the positive side, we are going to run this T-class fuse. All right, so I got this side crimped down and heat shrink. And now we're gonna get the measurement here. Just up in here, get it right about where it's gonna go. It's gonna go for it. All right. That's what we ended up with. Well, I think it sealed the deal, but let me go get it. Yeah, it sealed the deal, but let's give it another knock just to make sure. All right, looks real good. Okay, there we go. We got a nice fit now. All right, we got the next piece measured out and crimped in. Pop it on. Let's get the negative fit up in here. By the way, I am a do-it-yourself installer. I am no professional. This system here that I'm installing is only the seventh system that I have installed myself. I am definitely not a professional or claim to be on the same level as Will Prowse. We all have our own styles and I'm showing you the best way I know. Okay, so we got everything hooked up. The positive now is going to the positive side on the bus bar, running all the way up and going into the positive on the inverter. We have the negative coming out of the inverter, coming down, going through and under the batteries here, coming up on the other side here and running to the negative side of the bus bar. And of course, both negative wires running to each battery and likewise, both positive running to each battery. So what we're interested in doing now is tightening up every connection and making sure everything is really snug. Okay, slap the bus bar covers back on. Okay, now we have some heavy duty eight gauge wires. We are going to run these wires for the AC output. So the power out of the inverter will all be running down here to this plug. The parameters of the inverter charger that we're using today by lead time is going to require us to run some of these panels in parallel because it can only handle so much voltage input. The inverter that we had in place before this lead time inverter could handle 500 watts DC from the solar panels. The lead time parameters will only accept 145 volts. So we're going to use the same panels, but we are going to rewire them so that they will work with the lead time equipment. Okay, it's a little messy up there now, but we do have it wired in parallel. And then we wired three of them together in series. That was just to lower the voltage. We're gonna come back in a little while and button it up and make the wires look all nice and tidy. Now that we've wired one set of the panels in parallel, it has brought our voltage down from 160 to 115. It's now going to be compatible with the lead time inverter. All right, we got the negative up in here. We're gonna go ahead and get the positive to the solar panel up in here. Give it a tug, make sure none of them will come out. Okay, there it is, they're both hooked up. Now we'll run the rubber grommet back up in here. We have powered up the batteries. They're sitting pretty low right now because I had them running for the last two days, just testing them. We're down to about 18%. 
Okay, as it stands right now, it's only showing 79 volts is coming in. Okay, it says that we're charging, but there's only four amps coming into the batteries, and it is just an absolute crazy cloudy day today. I mean, there's absolutely no sun out here. It's January, it's cold, and this is what you get. And we're only fluctuating between 100 and 300 watts. So what we have done is run the wire here where we could plug it into a generator or just plug it into the wall. This will back charge the batteries when the solar panels just absolutely cannot produce any power. If you're in an off-grid situation, you'll plug it into a generator. But here where we're at, at this house, we're going to plug it into the wall. Okay, now that we're plugged into the wall, it shouldn't take but a minute or two and it should ramp up some power here. And there it is, it's starting to push 20 amps into the batteries right now. So the solar and the wall are both charging the batteries at this point. Right now it shows that uh, we have a current of 10.2 amps coming into each battery, which is basically a total of 20 amps between the two batteries here. 9.9 .9 here coming in and 10.2 here coming in. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is put the cover back over this. That was a very fun install. When I finish hooking the system into the house, my plan is for it to run the TV, the internet modem, the refrigerator, and the microwave and deep freezer. This is going to be a great backup system for them when their power goes out. If you're interested in these lead time products, I'm going to leave links in the description of this video to the exact equipment that I installed. I think we'll do an update video in a month to show you how well this system actually works. If you're interested in the Sun Gold solar panels, I will also leave that link in the description. Thanks for watching my video. Videos, and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section.